Hey, what's up guys? Looks like we have a brand new banner called Winter Wardens. It comes with a brand new 5-star healer, a 5-star dragon, and a new 4-star blade. I'm not going to do a full proper in-depth review for this one because honestly these units aren't very interesting and I think I can summarize them up pretty quickly. Also, I just want to get started working on the Magman review since I know a lot of you guys have been asking me about that, alright? Okay, so John Zia is our first 5-star water staff. She's basically Daniel, but better to simply put it. Skill 1 costs the same, being at 5916 SP, and both removes burn. Skill 2, again, is almost the same thing, except that the cost difference is about 3000 apart, and John Zia's skill 2 has a health regen effect. And then for her abilities, she has skill prep 100%, and HP 70 equals 15% increased healing. Everything about her is better than Daniel. The only con is that her skill 2 costs about 3,000 more, which isn't that big of a deal in High Brunhilde trials, especially considering that she comes with 100% skill prep and her skill 2 applies health regen. Daniel only really needed to use his skill 2 like about 3 times per fight, once in the beginning before the initial blast, and then the other 2 times are used to cushion damage from chasers and stacks, so the SP cost should be fine. Unless your team is running double buff abilities, then of course John Zia won't be able to activate the double buff ability as much compared to Daniel. John Zia's biggest pro is that she isn't required to use the Chocolatier's worm print like Daniel. She can use anything that she wants for her second print. Another big thing is her skill 2 having health regen. In high Brunhilde trials, she can pop her skill 2 to cushion the blow from Brunhilde's initial blast, and then the health regen effect is going to assist her with healing her teammates back to full. I know that inexperienced Daniels have a really hard time with healing, so having a regen effect in skill 2 definitely makes John Zia way more easier to play and a lot more forgiving to play as well. My opinion is that if you already have heavily invested into Daniel and you have no problem playing as him, then you don't really need a John Zia unless you're a healer main and just want to collect all the healers. Daniel already fulfills the healer role just fine, and recently there has been lots of new units that have made it easier for Daniel. First of all, Howling Meridimus greatly assisted with Daniel's rotations, giving him enough skill haste to be able to get one more heal off during the early volcano phase. Then just recently, we got Gala Elsan, who has a skill 2 that grants 25% flame res, which greatly helps with reducing damage. Is she better than Daniel? Yes. Will she replace Daniel in Hyper and Hilda Trials? Yes and no. Daniels will be just fine, he's not dead just yet. It's not like people are going to lock out Daniel and only accept John Zia's. I think if you are someone who wants to use Daniel in High Brun Hill Trials but cannot due to not having the limited Chocolatier's Worm print, then John Zia is definitely for you. Also, she's obviously a 5 star opposed to Daniel being a 4 star so she's going to have higher might which makes it easier for her to get into better pub rooms. It's a minor pro but I know some of you guys care about that. The new water dragon is Kamoi, do I really need to go over this? He's a prime strength dragon just like Kagasuchi and Hastur. These dragons are just okay in co-op but they excel in solo content such as Micro Gauntlet. You can put multiple Kamois on your AI allies and then all the prime strength buffs will funnel in on your control character. Kamoi, I would say is even less valuable than the prime strength dragons of the other element just because flame Micro Gauntlet is considered the easiest one among the 5 elements. Now Durant, the 4 star Shadow Blade, is probably the most interesting in this banner. He's a guy skill 1 that increases the strength by a huge 40% for 20 seconds. That's a big and a long buff, but it decreases his defense by 25%. His skill 2 is exactly the same except that it increases the user's crit rate by 30%. His abilities require him to be at full HP. At full HP, he's going to get 13% strength and 17% crit damage. Okay, so we have a Blade character here that has a kit focused on self buffing and dealing damage with normal attacks. Apparently his damage is around Addis's level, which is really good, but in a real fight scenario, I think his damage output would be less impressive. Like I don't think he's going to be good in High Jupiter Trials. High Jupiter does a few unavoidable attacks which will knock Durant out of his ability passive buffs, and Jupiter just does a lot of attacks where you have to move around and dodge stuff such as bolt barrages, bolt impacts, Fulgers, six ways, and the clockwise bolt attack. With that being said, Durant's uptime on the self buffs won't be as good in that fight. 
I think Yasu and Natalie are still better than him in High Jupiter, but Durant will be a fine choice for Mercurial Gauntlet, but only for level 50 and below, I think. I don't think he'll be that good for levels 50 and above because Roy's Purple Claps will knock Durant out of his passive buffs. Also, I think he's going to have a hard time surviving Purple Claps when he has a stack or two of 25% defense down. And there you have it, that's my mini review on the Winter Wardens banner. I personally think this banner is a huge skip. It's filled with a bunch of stuff that players for the most part don't really need. But let me know what you guys think about these new characters in the comments down below. Anyways, as always guys, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.